Shalom, sistren, and welcome to another Lioness Liberty lesson. Before we begin, we give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High Yah in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, and we call upon Him this day that His Holy Spirit be with us to reach us, to teach us, and to guide us through this lesson according to the truth of His holy and righteous word. We pray all things in the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, our salvation, the Messiah. Amen. So in this lesson, we are simply introducing the concept of the Feast of Yah, and the reason why we are taking a look at these feasts is because the spring and fall feast days um, prescribed according to scripture under the law of Moses have deep prophetic underpinnings and basically cover the first coming of Hamashiach and the second coming of Hamashiach. And so we'll be taking a look at these individually in order to unwrap those prophetic underpinnings. Um, but this is just an introduction into these concepts. So we'll beginning by we'll begin, excuse me, by looking at Leviticus chapter 23 verses 1 through 4 and it reads and Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of Yahuwah, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of Yahuwah, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. So, in verse 2 we see this introduction of holy convocation, and we'll be getting into the understanding of this word in just a moment here. But the reason I wanted to read all four of these verses, you know, and not just to verse 2, is because a lot of the feast days are prescribed Sabbaths. And even the Sabbath itself has prophetic understanding. You know, Yah creating the world in six days and resting on the seventh is prophetic of that seventh day, um, you know, spiritually, which we will rest with the Most High in Zion. So once this heaven and earth is renewed after the second coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, then we shall take that eternal rest with the Most High. And so the Sabbath day is a practice or um, honoring what is to come and also honoring, you know, the creation of the Most High, which occurred in six days with the rest on the seventh. So, holy convocation, what does this phrase mean? So, looking here in the Strong's Concordance, we have Strong's entry H4744. The Hebrew word is mikra. It is a masculine noun. And in the King, King James Version, we see this Hebrew word mikra translated as convocation, assemblies, calling, reading. Moving further down into this entry in the Strong's Concordance, we see the outline of biblical usage, um, very similar to the translations, convocation, reading, a calling together, sacred assembly, etc. And then in the Strong's definitions, we see it's something called out, i.e. a public meeting, also a rehearsal, assembly, calling, convocation, reading. And so the important thing to note here is that these holy convocations, these feast days prescribed by the Most High, are rehearsals for what is to come. So it's an assembly, it's a calling out, it's a reading to honor the historical implications of these feast days, but also to rehearse for what is to come. So kind of, you know, finding this understanding through scripture, we have Colossians chapter 2 verses 16 through 17. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Hamashiach. So we have to understand that these feast days prescribed under the law of Moses are a shadow of things to come, but the body or the essence of them is of Hamashiach. And then Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 through 4 also gives us a similar understanding. 
For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. And we know that there is only one drop of blood that can cleanse us of our sins. And that is the blood that was spilled by Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah who is our salvation. And so the sacrifices that were made under the law of Moses, the feast days, the tabernacle pattern, all these things are a shadow of the things to come. And they have partly been fulfilled already, but there are still many other things that need to be fulfilled before the end comes. So just getting a little overview here um, of the feast days or the holy convocations of the Most High. So we have them separated into the spring feasts and the fall feasts. And the understanding here is that the spring feasts are prophetic um, understandings of the first coming of Hamashiach. And the fall feasts prophesy of the second coming of Hamashiach. And these feast days are detailed in Leviticus chapter 23. And like I said, we'll be getting into each one of them individually. But just looking at this overview here, in the spring feasts, we have the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Fruits, and the Feast of Weeks, um, known as Pentecost. In the fall feasts, we have the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Booths. And um, in total, this comprises seven feast days. So just in summary of what we went over today, these feast days and holy convocations are a reminder of where we have been historically. They are a foreshadow of where we are going. They are a practice in preparation of what is to come, right? They are a shadow of these things that are going to occur. They are rehearsals to prepare us, just as they are practice It's saying the same thing. And once again, a remembrance of where our ancestors have been before. So with that, that's just a quick summary of the feast days. We'll be getting into each one of them individually in time come. Grace and peace be with you all, sister, and shalom.